I'm Cassie and in my little Japanese kitchen today we're going to be making nikujaga. Nikujaga is a great example of Japanese home cooking. It's warming, it's relatively simple and of course it has those four main ingredients of Japanese cooking which are soy sauce, mirin, sake and sugar. If you're wondering what Japanese home cooking is like, this is a great place to start. One bite of this and you'll be transported to a Japanese home. This nikujaga recipe makes for a great dinner on a cold night. Nikujaga comes from the words niku and jagaimo, meaning meat and potato. So just from that you can get a pretty good idea of what this dish is like. But this is not a dish that you would find that easily in a normal Japanese restaurant in Tokyo for example. But you might find it in izakaya and smaller family run restaurants. And there aren't too many variations on this dish, but the main two variations that I have seen are the choice of meat and whether they put in konyak or not. Although the meat is always thinly sliced for a nikujaga recipe, you can choose between beef and pork. Today we're going to be using pork. And the other variation is whether you put in konyak jelly or not. Today we're going to make the most simple and accessible version of this, so we're not going to be putting in konyak jelly. But if you do want to, then get the thread type and put it in just before you put on the lid. So just from that, you probably already have a pretty good idea of what's going to go into this nikujaga. But let's have a look at what exact ingredients we're going to need. For our nikujaga, as well as our liquid seasonings, we're going to be using some dashi. Along with the thinly sliced meat of your choice, some vegetables and some light brown sugar or white sugar. So let's get to it. I'm going to start off by washing and peeling my vegetables. In a lot of Japanese recipes you'll find that things get peeled. As a Brit I have less of a tendency to peel things so it feels like a bit more of a waste to just peel it and throw it away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the peel and then I'm going to boil it up and just make it into a nice easy vegetable stock. So let's get peeling. And this is my little pot of peelings that I'm going to be using for a stock. I'm okay with leaving these little bits on the potato, but if you're not, then you can cut them out or just keep peeling. Okay, so now that everything is washed and peeled, then we are going to start cutting them up. And we're going to be cutting everything slightly differently, so I'll just run through that with you. So first off for the onion, we're going to take off the outer skin, then take off the top and the bottom, and then we're going to cut it into chunks. So kind of wedges as opposed to very thin slices. We don't want the onion slices to be too thin because then it'll start to disintegrate a little bit into the nikujaga. Then for our potatoes, we are going to just simply cut them into four because these are pretty small. And for the eagle-eyed viewers out there, you might have noticed that I've gone up to four potatoes instead of three that was in the ingredients shot. And that's just because my potatoes are a little bit small, so I've just added an extra one. So then for the carrot, we're going to cut off the top and the bottom, and then we're going to do a Japanese rangiri cut. That just means a rolling cut. So starting from the thinner end of the carrot, we cut diagonally into the carrot, then you roll and you cut again, roll, cut again, and we get this kind of triangular oblong shape. They're not going to be exactly the same shape each time, but they're going to be a fairly similar size. And once we get to the thicker part of the carrot, you start cutting in from the middle of the carrot, and hopefully these will all be about the same size as our potato pieces. So probably actually the hardest part of this dish is cutting everything up because now all we're really going to do is put everything into the pot and let it simmer. So we're going to start with the onions. So we only really need a small amount of oil because we're just going to soften the onions slightly and then add in the meat. And then I'm just going to plop all the onions in here. And just make sure that they're broken up. We just start with the onions to get rid of some of the bitterness. And once they're starting to get a bit shiny and the room significantly smells like onions, we can add in our meat. 
This is very fine cut meat and it's already cut into small pieces so I didn't need to do anything to it. But basically we want really really thin pieces like this and just sort of separate them as you put them into the pot. Can you hear me? Once your meat is about 90% cooked, then we're going to add in our other veggies. And we just want to kind of coat these in oil and some of the flavors from the meat. So just stir them around a little bit. So now that everything is in here and it's covered in the kind of meaty flavors and some of the oil and we're starting to get a little bit of liquid coming out, then we're going to cover it with water and all of our seasonings. If you're using cognac, then you will need to use a bit more water, but because I'm not using cognac, then I'm only going to do 200 milliliters of water. And you should kind of judge how much water to put in by how much it's covering it. I think this is a little bit low in comparison to the amount of stuff we've got in here. Maybe because I put in that extra potato, I don't know. But it looks a little bit low for me, so I'm going to add another 100 milliliters of water. So you want it to be about half covered, so you can see the water level, but it's not completely covering all of the vegetables and meat. And now we're just going to add our seasonings. So it's two tablespoons of all of our liquid seasonings, then three teaspoons of sugar, and half a packet of dashi. So about four grams of dashi powder. But if you have liquid dashi that you've maybe made at home, then you could just use that in place of the water. Basically the only difference between white sugar and brown sugar is that brown sugar has some molasses in it which makes it have a slightly deeper flavour. I'm not sure it really actually makes that much difference but to me brown just goes better with meat. Ooh. And then just give it a stir and make sure that everything is getting coated and bring it to a boil. And now that we've added all of our liquid seasoning then everything is at least partially submerged in the liquid now. So once it gets to a simmer, then you might start to notice some foam start to appear on the top of your liquid. A lot of Japanese people will remove this foam. You can either use a spoon or a, um, what do you call this thing? A ladle, that's it. Um, or you can use a ladle to skim it off the top. But quite frankly, I don't see much of a difference, so I personally don't bother. And also today, I'm not really seeing much foam anyway. So if you want to, then you can, but you don't have to. Right, so now that everything is bubbling away, then we're going to cover it with a lid and just leave a slight gap because we don't want this to be a complete stew. We kind of want the liquid to bubble down a little bit. So we're going to leave a slight gap. You could also just cover this with foil and it will have a similar effect. And this is the point where you would add your cognac noodles if you are using them. Right, so this is the easiest part. We're just going to cover it with our lid and we're going to leave this for 15 to 20 minutes or until our potatoes and carrots have softened. So I'm just gonna chill for a little bit so I'll see you when this is done. So now you should have a nice bubbly stew, but to cook down some of the liquid, I usually just cook it uncovered for a few more minutes. Then once running your chopsticks or spatula through the liquid leaves a bit of a trail, then it's done. This nikujaga is slightly sweet, but with all the comforts that you would expect from an autumn or winter dish. Because who doesn't want a good meat and potato stew on a cold night? So this recipe isn't exactly going to win any awards. It's a little bit sweet for me, so I don't want to make it all the time, but it is comforting and warming and seems like the perfect kind of thing to make on a Friday night. Either way, I hope you learned something about Japanese home cooking, and if you did, then press that subscribe button and learn along with me. And I'll see you next Sunday. Bye!